Hey there! With Halloween right around the corner, you might be looking for some new decorations for the spooky season. That's why today we're going to be making these cute, tiny pumpkin lanterns that are so easy to make and the materials you need for them are affordable and easy to find. Let's get into it! Stuff you will need The first step is to get a few sheets of newsprint and start crumpling them up. After that, you want to get your small plastic bag and start filling it up with the crumpled up pieces of paper. And what we need to do now is to start molding this into a nice round shape. This ball can be as small as you want. The only thing that you should make sure of is that your candle can fit inside. So make sure that the base and height of your ball are big enough to fit the candle. After you're done molding and adjusting the ball, go ahead and tie the bag. Next is to create the ridges on the pumpkin and for that I'm going to use some yarn. You want to begin by tying the yarn around this knot on the plastic bag. And what we're going to do is wrap this piece of yarn around the ball to create the dents of the ridges. So as I'm wrapping my yarn around in each direction, I'm going to make sure to pull on the yarn hard enough for it to press into the ball and create some dents. When I'm finished going in one direction, I'm going to use this knot in the middle to rotate and change the direction of my yarn. And in each direction I go, I'm only wrapping my yarn around the ball twice. I'm wrapping the first two lines to look like a plus mark and then I'm gonna wrap two more lines in the shape of an X. After I'm done, I'm gonna cut the yarn and tie it again around the knot in the middle. And you can tuck the loose strands of yarn under the other tightly wrapped pieces. Our next step is to wrap our pumpkin all over with masking tape. Later we're going to be using paper mache to cover all over this pumpkin and so we need to do this step so that the paper mache can stick to it more easily. I'm going to use thin strips of masking tape and cover all over the pumpkin one rib at a time. Once we're done with that, we're going to make the stem. First, I'm going to undo this knot on the plastic bag. Then I'm going to twist this piece of plastic in order to compress it and shape it the way I want the stem to look. You can make the stem look however way you want, but for this one, I wanted to twist it and make it into a loop, which was a little bit more difficult. And after that, I'm gonna take some thin strips of masking tape and wrap them around the stem so that it can hold its shape and not unravel. After you're done securing the tail, you can go ahead and snip off the rest of it. Now we can move on to preparing the paper mache stuff. To make the paper mache glue, I'm gonna use two parts glue and one part water and mix them well. 
The consistency you get should be neither too sticky and nor too watery. Here's a list of substitutes you can use instead of PVA glue. Next, we need to shred our newsprint into smaller pieces. They don't have to look perfect. Once we have all that ready, we can begin the first layer of paper mache. Just like with the masking tape, I'm going to take some thin strips of paper, dip them in the glue, and then apply them over the pumpkin. Run your fingers over the pieces a few times to make sure they properly stick to the pumpkin. Since the shape of this pumpkin has curves all over it, it's best to use very small pieces of paper so that the end result can look as smooth as possible. I'm going to go all over the pumpkin and cover it with paper mache just like this. And after a while, you will be able to tell already how much smoother and more firm your pumpkin feels. After finishing all around the pumpkin, it's time for the stem. And like before, I'm going to use some very thin strips for this. It is a bit of a challenge if you have a curved stem like mine, so it's a good idea to use very small pieces of paper and just try to cover as much of it as you can. And this is what the pumpkin looks like by the end of one layer. But of course, we want our pumpkin to be smoother and stronger than this, so we need to cover it with more layers of paper mache. Though make sure that your pumpkin has dried completely before moving on to the next layer. And if you want, you can use a hair dryer to speed up the drying process. Once your pumpkin has totally dried, you can start covering it with paper mache just like before. And I'm gonna try to make the surface as smooth as I can with these layers. Though you don't have to cover the stem every time with each new layer, and just that one time was enough for it. These more layers are meant to create a sturdy shell for when we're gonna empty the insides of the pumpkin later. I ended up covering my pumpkin with about three total layers, and that should be enough to give you a hard and smooth enough surface. And here at the end, I'm just using some pieces to blend the base of the stem with the rest of the pumpkin. By the time it looks and feels like you've made a petrified garlic, that means we're ready to move on to the next step. The next step is to cut and hollow out our pumpkin. I'm gonna place the base of my candle on the bottom of the pumpkin and use a pencil to trace around it. And then you can use cutters, scissors, or an X-Acto knife to cut out this circle. And now we can take out all the paper that is stuffed inside the pumpkin. I'm gonna put my candle inside this hole just to check if it's the right size and trim it a bit more if it needs any adjustments. Next is to draw the face and you can do any design you like. As you can see, I've chosen this very spooky face. And first, I'm gonna choose the better side of my pumpkin where I want the face to be and then draw my design on with a pencil.
Next is to cut out this design. And I recommend using an X-Acto knife for this if you have one. But if not, a regular cutter and scissors will do just fine. And our last step is to paint our pumpkin. Of course, I'm using orange paint for the body of my pumpkin. And when that's done, I'm going to add some black to the orange to make brown and paint the stem with it. And now all that's left to do is to pop the candle inside and turn it on. And you're all done! Hope you've enjoyed the video and found it useful. If you make this, make sure to send me a picture on my social media accounts. The link to those will be in the description. And comment below what you would like me to make for future videos. Like, subscribe, blah blah blah. And happy Halloween! Okay, bye!